All right, so we were talking about how um, the water column is under negative tension or, or negative pressure, which is tension, as it's being pulled up towards the leaves from the roots. And what kind of tension, why doesn't the water column break under the kinds of tensions that occur or the negative pressures that occur in xylem, such as uh, anywhere from negative 0.5 to negative 2.5 megapascals? And the answer was that, um, that water has a high degree of tensile strength which is the maximum tension that the water can withstand with before it breaks. So, uh, so water's tensile strength is um, basically negative 30 megapascals. So it's within the it's you know within below the threshold where water the water um, column might break. But the tensile strength of water in plants is dependent on a couple of factors here. One of which is the diameter of the conduit, such that such that the the um, smaller the diameter or radius um, of the conduit the higher the tensile strength. Okay, um, so in this case, we'll talk about presence of gases here in just a second. Um, which, so we might ask, which has the higher tensile strength, or water would be have a higher tensile strength in which of the following? In uh, tracheids, or in vessel elements. So if you look back at the diameters of these, you can answer that question. All right. Now, um, the presence of gases becomes important. Um, there's um, bubbles that can be um, present in the water column um, formed by uh, carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, and oxygen gases, and and those the gases tend to break up the hydrogen bonds between uh, water molecules, which which then reduces the cohesion and therefore the tensile strength in the water column. Um, and so, uh, when those bubbles coalesce, so this is number two, the presence of gases. Gases can coalesce. And into bubbles, so air bubbles inside of vessel elements or tracheids, and as they coalesce, they can um, basically that process or that the presence of those bubbles we refer to as cavitation. So when a cavit when cavitation is occurring, um, then that can break up the that has the potential to break up the water column. So cavitation can. Um, be uh, at risk um, in conditions such as, uh, let's say we'll say the plant is at risk in conditions such as uh, under drought conditions or with freezing. So as the water column freezes and then thaws, then there's no more of that um, the hydrogen bonding between water molecules as it thaws uh, differentially along the column and so that can lead to a cavitation. And cavitations, which are air bubbles, can ultimately lead to an embolism, which is a blockage in the water column or essentially a break in the water column completely. And the, the damage, of course, is that if there's a break in the water column, then water would be blocked um, it would be blocking uh, basically maybe leaves from their water supply. All right, and so that can of course lead to wilting, and wilting leads to um, the loss of the structural structure of the of the leaves for photosynthesis, and you know the transport of any um, other nutrients and uh, sugars around the plant as well. Now there are certain adaptations that plants have or um, mechanisms to overcome the risk of cavitation and one, one of those is um, is root pressure. So root pressure building up at night can reconnect the water column. So when negative pr pressure pulls the water column apart, the positive pressure tends to reconnect it. Um, so that's one mechanism. And second, uh, the second mechanism or adaptation um, that's present is called uh, bordered pits. And this is uh, a characteristic of certain plants that are um, freezing stress adapted. 
um, and perhaps drought stress adapted. So this diagram over here shows us what bordered pits look like. So where the pit membrane is, uh, which is the primary cell wall that doesn't have a secondary cell wall um, laid down here, uh, is a thin layer for the water to pass from one from, from say one trachea over here to the second trachea over here. Now this structure right here is referred to as a torus and the torus oops, the torus um, blocks water movement through the pit. So if we were to sort of um, try to simulate uh, drawing um, let's say these are two different trachids here and I don't always get this correct, but we'll try our best here. And let's say that we have uh, an air, we'll draw across here, an air bubble right here. The air bubble has a higher pressure, so it's going to press on that torus in this direction, which is opposite to what we have over here in this other drawing. And that's going to block this opening here so that water coming through this trachea isn't going to be able to come up but it's going to have to go through here then it can bypass this trachea over here up here and then go around. So that's a way to um, overcome the stresses associated with cavitation and ultimately um, uh, to, to avoid embolisms.